Hey everyone, welcome back to the Trailline channel. This is Richard here with Ross Haber, and today we'll be talking through the chart of Global Foundries Inc., which is our chart of the week. And this was super powerful, breaking out uh, from below 60 here into new all-time highs. Definitely short-term extended, uh, but you can see the volume coming through. You see those signs of accumulation. And this is on uh, Ross Haber's Stocks on Deck from the Top 10 Report, which if you're interested in, will be linked down below over at trailerline.com. So uh, Ross, first things first, I'd love to just kind of hear your overall thoughts on the chart and price action. Um, and uh, yeah, just want to hear your take. Perfect. Let's, you know, let's do the Russian doll thing, starting with the the big on down to the small. This is going to be our industry group here. We see we're dealing with the top part of the day, top third of the database, clearly 65 out of 197. We've got the N factor going on here, right? This is clearly a new stock, very recent IPO. Even though what we're looking at here is marked as a flat base, which is correct. I look at this personally, much more so as a IPO base um, scenario. As Richard said, you know, you can see the huge push, you know, all of this volume as the stock pushes up and there isn't a soul interested in selling this stock. You can see how tight it holds. And our, our favorite little launching pad scenario here, all of these moving averages crossing up underneath the price as it tightens up on light volume. Thank you, Richard. And it just explodes through um, that, pro you know, the prior all time high after its IPO. Um, so as Richard mentioned in the very beginning yes it is very short term extended however um this is one where you don't want to miss it either so <clears throat> this is the kind of thing so as i always say risk reward is all that matters um i don't like to buy anything more than two percent past a proper pivot i really don't and that's typically the last spot i like to buy something but we didn't you know there wasn't many people buying this stock as a as it went through here, just because of where the general market was. Otherwise, I think we would have had a lot of people starting to buy the stock on this day and even as it went through here. So uh, <clears throat> this is textbook as it goes through here. So within 2% of 7325 using 70 as a stop on a closing basis, I think $3 on 73 is worth the risk getting into such a powerful new leader. You know, we've got the IPO U-turn working for it, which is a, uh, of all the bases, one that seems to, or not one that seems one of the ones that works um, more often than not along with that cup and handle, but the success rate of these breakouts tends to uh, be good. And this has got all of the um, fundamental behind it. We can see the huge quarter over quarter earnings and sales here. Um, because it's a newer stock, we're only showing um, one quarter of institutional yeah. sponsorship. We don't have, so there's nothing to see in terms of a trend there. Um, <clears throat> and as of yet, we're not showing any of uh, IBD's flagship funds. And I would point out the estimates are huge for 22 and 23, um, a buck 87 and 252. And that's as they've been uh, improved, as yeah, they've raised sure. estimates um, over just recently. So that's it right there. This one kind of has everything going for it, except that it is a little bit short term extended. So, oh, again, so let's say you, you want to have X, Y, you want to ultimately have a 20% position in the stock. Maybe you buy a third of, a, of your position at 73.25, then watch it from there. And then you manage your risk from there. Watch where it, watch where it is, how it sets up and do the best you can to work your way into your said position at, you know, that price you're working towards. And then that's it. You manage your risk from there. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's all, again, let me, and I'll end on this note. Never buy a stock unless you know exactly where your sell stop is and why, which is why it's got to be tight and logical. Just tight doesn't do it. So that's all I've got. How about you, Richard? Anything else to add from? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you covered it really well. Personally, I'd love to see some tightness for it to kind of flag over this pivot. And yeah. then maybe we, we get kind of this as another add on buy point maybe have a short-term DTL that you can use as well, managing risk at that 73.25. That would be kind of the ideal scenario. Give those moving averages time to catch back up. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I think one to have on your focus list um, and watch for that additional entry. Uh, don't feel like you've missed it, even if you have missed it, because if this truly does to become 
you know, a monster stock, there'll be so many entries, even future bases where you can work your way in. So uh, don't feel pressured to buy where in, in a spot where you can't manage risk. I love what Ross said about needing to have a tight and logical stop. That's 100% true. And that will occur. There will be future low risk, uh, high reward opportunities in this name if it does to go on to become a leader. So with that, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, let us know your thoughts down below on GFS. Uh, definitely a great stock to buy if you manage to spot it right through this pivot below 60. And even if you work your way in here at this other potential pivot point. Uh, but with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks. Thanks.